welcome to a Stitch With Me tag that I was inspired to start by Teresa Bennett and Jennifer Reagan from Jen's Stitching Niche. Way back in the beginning of her channel, she had a visit with her friend Teresa and they did a tag video. Since I'm on my own and wanted to um, share that tag, I didn't want you to just be looking at me the whole time so I thought I would share my answers to this tag while I stitch Though He Seen Us Sleeping with Lucy Beam Love and Stitches designing. This is a reproduction um, by Rebecca Nolan and I have used her different floss lists to combine quite a few of my own choices. <laughs> Um, if something looked a little too bright for me, I would tone it down. If um, I liked one from Gast and not one from Classic Colorworks, I actually, I think I went to the Stitch Niche in Arlington, Texas, my local needlework store to pick this. This was a gift from my friend Frankie and it's just a really unique floss. I really like blue and orange together. This was a Victorian model, it has some really pretty variegation. Um, I didn't use a whole lot of this dolphin color. Um, I really like this Merlin floss here from Weeks and some other just favorites. I am going to run out of my border um, floss. I am going to have to put in order for Brown Bear from Gentle Art. That's what I used on all of this border. I really like the way that variegates. That was the called for border color. This Mountain Mist is really pretty and another Victorian motto that hardly ever shows up just a few places and I've got a ton of it. Otter Creek was my vine where my leaves are and this is one of my absolute favorite flosses. I put all my flosses on a ring. This I got from my friend Kim Lehman. She sent that to me with some of these heart um, tags last year and I label it Sometimes I put a picture, but this time I just wrote the tag. So let's go ahead and get started. I've loaded up my 28 count ballpoint needle with um, a different floss than is called for. I'm supposed to be using um, Campfire, but I don't have a lot of Campfire left. And Campfire and 355 are really close. So I just loaded up 355 so I don't run out of Campfire. I have moved this border up a stitch because I wanted it to fit a frame. I'll insert a photo of what that looks like. But I am just kind of making it up as I go. So I'm having to move this just a little bit. And I think I want to do it from this bottom instead of from the top. One, two, three. This is as low as it's going to go. I don't know. Or do I want to do it here? Which looks more like the middle. One, two, three. Yeah, I think I'm going to start here. I'm starting one stitch lower than the chart again because I had um, <coughs> changed it to fit my frame. I'm not sure how well I'm gonna be able to do this and talk. <laughs> I might have to do a voiceover. In fact, I am gonna have to do a voiceover. So here I am doing a voiceover because I can't do too many things at once. And I have a few problems as you can tell as I'm stitching. Sometimes I hit the wrong hole or I get really off later on in this um, filming, but I'm having to hold my hands a little farther away from myself than I'm used to, so please forgive that. Hopefully you can see how I'm stitching in hand and how I'm always manipulating the fabric so that I'm stitching upward, which is the way I like things. The first question on the Jen and Teresa tag numero uno, because they actually did two, 
and I'll possibly film that later. The first question is, is there a UFO that you regret never finishing? And not really. I have UFO'd a few projects that I decided just weren't my style. One from Stony Creek that I bought um, with other orders that came free. And I started it and just thought, I don't really care for this. So I don't regret never finishing that. Um, but I do regret not continuing on Luz Gonzalez. I'll insert a picture of what Luz looks like. Several people have stitched her. I've seen on Instagram. I know Olivia B just finished her not too long ago, and she's very beautiful, but the embroidery is very tricky at the top for me. I am going to try it again and not give up, but she has taken a back seat to some other things I want to stitch. So not really a regret, but she is a UFO that I will finish eventually. I love her so much. The other question um, Teresa and Jen asked is, what is your most favorite and least favorite DMC? I don't really have an answer to that because um, I think there's a place for just about all DMC. Some of the brighter ones I don't really care for. I don't like bright orange or bright neon green. Um, and I don't like DMC reds or teals. Um, it's not particularly, <laughs> which is funny because those are my two favorite colors. So I don't really have a favorite DMC. I have a favorite anchor. My favorite anchor is Anchor 20. I'll insert a picture of that here and also a picture of it on the barn. I substituted the pink in... All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna Designs for Anchor 20, and I use it as often as I can. It's a dark red. The one that got away, question three. I have tried to have a good balance. I'm not buying charts right now because I find that I was spending just a little more than I needed to on that. Um, not to judge anyone that likes to collect charts, but I really want to only buy things that I intend to stitch. And I'm already 46, so I don't want to get beyond my life expectancy. What's that acronym? Stash Beyond Life ex Expectancy. Um, I really admired the Plantation Sampler. I'll put that here. I found it on an Etsy shop one time. And had it in my cart, but decided I've got enough big hills to stitch with animals in them. <laughs> and I did not get it. I like what um, Michaela says, or Michaela from The Nester on Instagram. I read this quote from her. I can admire it without acquiring it. <laughs> I have to say that to myself. Just because I admire something doesn't mean I need to own it. I can look at something and say, that's so beautiful. And sometimes I have to stitch it or I, I feel like I do. Other times I can let it go. And that was my decision on the Plantation Sampler by Canterbury Designs. But I will put it in here. If you have it, I think you should stitch it. It's very pretty. I also had in that same cart a stitch by Susie Reno, or a, a sampler by Susie Reno called Words to Live By. It's actually the Ten Commandments in Rhyme. I had never seen it before or since, but it is still available on eBay. And I want to stitch that. Um, I think I will put that on my 2023 plans. If I can find it, I, I really wanted to buy it today and I am sticking with my um, commitment. <laughs> so if it's meant to be, I will find it next year and it's fine. But it's a really pretty one by Susie Reno. It says Raise the Roof, but it specifically says her name as the designer. The Ten Commandments in Rhyme. If you've not seen that one, it's fun. Question four, any embarrassing cross-stitch mistakes? I definitely had a... Um, plan to stitch some really complicated samplers as a very very early beginner Sarah Woodham comes to mind with all the over one I didn't know how to do that and it has really kind of um got me stuck hang on just a second okay as I was saying I overextended myself thought I could do something more complicated than I could at the time but it maybe wasn't the worst mistake because if you think that something's too hard and 
kind of put it off, sometimes maybe you'll never try. So why not try it? Even if it looks hard and you think it's over your head, I think it's better to dive in than to be afraid. So kind of embarrassing that I was such a beginner taking on something. I was, I was just naive though. It was more ignorance than willful um, mistakes. <clears throat> the other question, the favorite, your favorite needle. I've talked about my ball tip needles before. I'm using those. In fact, in this um, clip where I feel like they just do such a good job of finding the hole when you're working, especially with a tight linen, like a 40 count or higher, I just find them invaluable. So the ball tip needles are definitely my favorite. I also really like petites. Um, you can use the last bit of thread with a petite needle, which appeals to my frugal nature. So those are a, a nice one as well. And I don't really have a brand. Um, I'm not really super picky on my needles. A pattern you want to do that isn't in vogue is question six. I picked up the Mary Inglebright pattern and I don't even know the name of it. I'll put a picture of it here. I think it's something Forever Friends just because as a um, younger girl I loved Mary Inglebright. My mom always bought me the calendar. This is the first year I don't have one in fact um, and it just I love her illustrations and the color and her sayings. So this picture um, or this particular cross stitch piece reminded me of my childhood and also of my friend Christy, who I used to soak in the sun and in the inner tubes when we were really little. We'd go to the lake in Lake Marion, if you know where that is in Kansas, and go water skiing and also just float around in our inner tubes. It just brought a sentimental feeling to me so and I think um, Colette the highway stitcher is doing a Mary Inglebright Sal so I'm glad I'm not the only one they may not be super in style and they are definitely dated but I still like it so um, stay tuned for that it's on my whip go the best shop I've ever visited question seven not a lot of cross stitch shops in my um, experience I've only been to three I've been to fancy stitches in Cleburne the Stitch Niche in Arlington. Those are kind of my local places and they're both great. But I think my favorite is the Silver Needle in Tulsa. It's not very far from where my parents live and it has a huge selection. So anytime you need something, they have it. Um, I've had some kind of iffy customer service there. Um, sometimes people can be a little grumpy and I try to be understanding. <laughs> but I, I was kind of frustrated by one employee in particular who told me that I couldn't stitch on 40. Like, have you seen this? Look at this. Why would you want to even try that? Which I felt like was a real um, mistake not to, you know, uh, discourage people from trying something. I, I can stitch on 40 now. And back then I was just like, oh, okay. You know, kind of felt like I had been chastised. And um, if you're trying to sell things, I don't think you should discourage people from trying new counts. Um I think her heart was in the right place. Maybe she was trying to save me money, but it kind of took the wind out of my sails a little bit. So, But most of the ladies there are very nice, and you find that with any shop and on any given day. Not everybody has a good day, so it's fine. I really wish to see Country Sampler in Wisconsin and Shepherd's Bush in Utah. Those are on my bucket list, along with a couple others, but those in particular. What does your family think of your stitching? My family uh, thinks I'm a little crazy, <laughs> maybe a little obsessive with my stitching because I pretty much do the uh, do needlework any spare moment I have between chores, between cooking. It's just something that I enjoy so much. I stitch every day. Um, but some of them think it's a little crazy. My mom loved it because she felt like it honored my grandma Helen her mother-in-law, and kind of my family history. Uh, a lot of my relatives apparently on that side always had a needle in their hand. So I think I come by it naturally. And my youngest daughter, Anna, or Anastasia, really wants to learn. She has a spot, uh, a piece that she's doing. So she's always really interested in what I'm stitching. And she is probably my best support in the family. The next question, what are my stitching pet peeves? I hate it when I get a big knot on the back of my sampler and I stitch away and don't realize it's there. It wastes about half this uh, strand of floss and then you have to cut it and it's all awkward and it's just annoying. 
Not a huge deal, but I, I hate to waste thread. Number 10, what is your most interest? Who is your most interesting cross stitch pupil? Um, I have taught some cross stitch pupils um, when I was doing an event last summer. And I guess the most interesting part of that experience leading a class with, there were over 40, I think 50 women. Um, there were several women, and it wasn't my junior high table because there was a table of 13 year olds it was my older ladies I had some that had never threaded a needle didn't have any idea how to thread a needle and I just assumed especially with the older generation that that was a skill taught you know in school I learned in home ec my mom didn't really teach me to sew and really my grandma didn't either um, I learned how to sew with a machine and how to hand sew from my home ec teacher Miss Thompson or Miss Townsend so I was surprised that those students of mine <laughs> had never threaded a needle, didn't even know how to hold it. So, but there's always a starting point. So that's no big deal. You can start somewhere. I had no idea how to cross stitch. I learned from watching YouTube. I credit Teresa um, Vanette for teaching me how to stitch in hand as well as Jan Hicks. I was watching Jan one day and something just clicked like, oh, that's how you find the hole. So I appreciate those ladies very much for their time uh, teaching that. And also Priscilla and Chelsea were why I started in the first place. So I am an interesting cross-stitch pupil in that I've only been stitching for a little over three years. Anybody can do it. I'm proof of that. <laughs> Number 11, what is a favorite piece you haven't stitched yet and why? I have two. Um, I couldn't really narrow it down. I bought Hannah Katarina from The Scarlet Letter for my 44th birthday and intended to start it after I finished Sarah Woodham, which we know how that has gone. <laughs> Not very well. And so she still sits in my stash, even though I love her. I love the bird. I love the colors. I love that it's a German sampler. In fact, I have several relatives called Catherine. She was a big part of how my family escaped persecution in Germany and went to Russia, Catherine the Great. So Katerina is a German form of that name. And my cousin or my niece is Catherine. Just a lot of um, family connections with that. It has German words on it and it has a lot of biblical scenes which spoke to me. So I hope to start that. Um, well, we'll see. I am going to start it someday. And Anne Ufendel as well. I missed the first go round with that. Sorry, I got interrupted. I was saying Anne Ufendel was a piece that I absolutely love that I don't know why I haven't started other than I just um, have so many big projects going. And I also wanted to possibly purchase Anne in silk, the threads. So hope to start her. Um, after I have a big sampler finish. Question 12 is, is there another hobby you want to be as adept at as cross stitch? And definitely I want to be a quilter. I have several quilts that I want to make. One that was started by my grandmother that I need to finish. It's an applique sunbonnet sue. And I keep saying that I'm going to start it and I haven't. <laughs> so... Just some um, anxiety about tackling that project, but I will. I will eventually. I definitely have some ideas. Number 13 is, is there an un underrated design, one that flew under the radar that you really like? I had one from Expo come to mind. I believe it was Expo by Manny Dodonna. Usually I think that designer does things like sewing boxes and really intricate sets. Um, but this sampler called God Save the King reminds me a little bit of Maria Finney by Shakespeare's Peddler, but bigger. And I just really like the muted colors of it. I thought it would look really pretty on like a soft um, blue or mint fabric, which is kind of a non-traditional choice. But um, I just really admired that design. And I'll put a picture of that here. I saw it on Etsy. It's still available. The other question, 14. Other than DMC, what's your favorite floss? And I've sung the praises, if you've watched my channel for a while, of Threadworks for quite a while. I really love the value that you get with their floss. They have really pretty variegation, and you get 20 yards for 430 from 123 Stitch. I would love to see 
the um, selection in one place. I don't know of a shop that sells Threadworks. If you do, please let me know. I, if it's somewhere I could travel to, I would love to see the Threadworks collection. They used to be called um, by another name. I don't remember what it was, but Threadworks ends in X, and I've recommended it to several fellow stitchers. I also really like Dinky Dye Silk. It's my favorite silk because it's, again, more affordable, and I just really like the colors and the selection. Number 15, if there was only one designer for the rest of your life that you would stitch, who would it be? I thought about this one for a while because there's several that come to mind, um, but ultimately I settled on Brenda Gervais just because I really resonate with her style, her color palettes. I like that she does a lot of seasonal series, but also really pretty samplers. I have um, a needle worker that I'm working on starting tomorrow, and I always look forward to it. Also her um, oh larger sampler, I think Carolina Tread Caroline something I um, got with my Christmas haul so I really hope to start her in 2023 and I just like her style she's really fun I, I w almost went with Stacy Nash as well because I um, I love her primitive style and then Plum Street Paulette Stewart would probably be my other one Barbara Anna I love as well but as far as like a breadth of styles and um, ones that I would want to put up in my home I think it would be Brenda Gervais Comment down below what your one designer, if you could stitch the rest of your life, who would it be? I'd, I'm interested to know. Number 16, is there a new designer that you are impressed with? And yes, um, there is a designer, Monticello Stitches. She has um, a floss tube, I believe, as well. I don't think she posts super regularly, but um, she's shown her pieces on floss tube is how I found her. And I love her colors, her kind of traditional style, but also kind of fun sayings. Um, her Make Me a Blessing sampler is really a favorite. So Monticello Stitches. I was trying to find her name. Um, I don't see it, though. Anyway, I'll tell you in a minute. Monticello Stitches is an new designer I'm impressed with. What is the ugliest thing you've ever stitched? Definitely my um, first piece from Walmart. It was a kit that was really hard actually. And um, Jean, Jean is Monticello Stitches um, designer. Jean Workman. So check out her floss tube. I'll try to link that below. Um, but my ugliest stitch was my Walmart kit. <laughs> I didn't know how to back stitch. I didn't know how to do confetti stitching. I made so many mistakes. I finally just, so many mistakes, I finally just kind of gave up and was like, okay, this is what it looks like. And I slapped it on a piece of red fabric. I think, did it have rickrack? I don't even think I knew how to do rickrack. It's very crooked. And it's also where I learned I hate stitching on white because... I left a dirty mark on my white fabric I was stitching in a hoop because I didn't know how to use um, stitching in hand. And I, um, like I said, realized, oh, I can't do that. I've got to have, um, got to have some color in my fabric. Otherwise, I feel anxious about getting it dirty. Sorry, I'm having to plug in my computer because I'm about to run out of power. So that would be my ugliest, but it was still a learning experience, and I actually think it's kind of cute when it's all finished, so there's really no ugly stitching. Least fabric, least favorite count of fabric, number 18. Definitely, um, it, it depends on the texture of the fabric. I don't mind stitching on 14, um, but I find most of the kind of kit stitches that I've done, um, or kit fabric that I've used with 14 count is really crunchy and stiff, especially that black Ada I used for the Priscilla um, and Chelsea, or actually Priscilla and Kathy chalkboard farm. I did not enjoy stitching on that, and it's not so much the count. I love Ada. I love and even weave. I love linen. I love everything. Um, it's just more the texture if it's really, really stiff. Although the Wichelt, I didn't have a problem with. I don't think I have a problem with stiff linen. I have a problem with stiff Ada. So not so much a count as a 
texture. Number 19, we're almost done. What needlework technique would you like to learn? I purchased in my naive beginner days a bunch of Victoria Sampler farm samplers. They're little miniature band samplers that are so beautiful. They come with silk packs. I didn't get the silk pack, but one of them has a hard anchor section and I think it's called Raven Hill Herb Sampler. I could try to find a picture of it, um, but it's really beautiful and it looks like fun, but I'm super intimidated. I would want to do that section first because if I mess up, what if I've done all the stitching all around it and then I make a cut or pull something and it ruins the whole thing? So I'd like to take a class on that. I'd like to take a class on hard anger. I don't really have a lot of interest in other techniques at this point, like gold work and some of those other things. Not really, or fiddly little things. Um, not really something I want to do, but maybe, maybe someday. And then the last question, I actually substituted um, the... Jen and Teresa Tag had a question about your most uh, favorite customer experience. And since I don't have a shop, um, I substituted that for what are your favorite scissors. And I'll try to link them. I think they're still available on eBay. They're under $5. They're the pointiest, sharpest, cutest scissors I own. <laughs> and they're one of the cheapest pair. I have some really nice, more expensive ones that I don't like to use to frog. But my eBay red scissors with the fob that was made by my sweet daughter Sophia are my absolute favorites. I want to try to figure out a way to wear them around my neck all the time, <laughs> like make some kind of, what do you call that? Um, there's a name for it, you're probably shouting it, but when you have the scissors around your neck, um, I would wear them all the time. I love them that much. So, <laughs> And you can see I put a highlight on the photo to show how worn, just how worn they are from my hands. So that was the Jennifer and Teresa tag numero uno. It's basically just a lot of questions about your favorites and things that you enjoy about needlework, um, sharing some favorite charts, sharing some knowledge you'd like to learn. And I would like to tag anyone else who makes a floss tube video. I didn't have anyone in particular. It would be fun to do if you have a duo like, um, a sister or a friend that you film floss tubes with but if you want to do a stitch with me in a similar style then consider yourself tagged we haven't done a lot of floss tube tags I don't know if there are any other than the needle worker tag um, so I credit like I said Jennifer and Teresa Vanette Jennifer Reagan for coming up with these questions probably two or three years ago <laughs> and you can watch their tag it was very entertaining Part of why I wanted to repeat it was because I found it very interesting, and I hope that you have found this interesting as well. Um, I'm going to put some music to the end of my stitching. I had to restitch part of what um, you might be seeing now because I got off by one line <laughs> while I was stitching, so I don't ever want to pretend to be a perfect stitcher. I am very imperfect. If you have any questions about the way I do stitch, um, I've had some questions about how I hold the needle. I do a lot of things like a left-handed person, even though I am not left-handed, but I definitely stitch, I think, like a left-handed person. And so it might look um, different to you. But I hope to show you this piece farther along in a video in about a week when I've finished the first half of my stitching rotation. And I hope you're having a great day. As I say in all my videos, may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. That's from Psalm chapter 90, verse 17. Have a great day.